All right, well, come check out our crib. This is Martian Machine. Come on. This is where all the shit goes down. Spend most of my time in there coming up with all my great ideas. A lot of shitty ideas though. This is just an old Coke machine we had laying around. Thought it'd be funny to make a secret door. And then it's ADA compliant. Then we got the pisser and the sink. This was the old 63 Chevy tailgate, I think, from my grandfather. So we turned it into a urinal divider and old toolbox covers the sink. Just try to dress everything up, make things unique. Spend a lot of time in here, so just try to have fun with everything. This here is my station, the welding station, little fabrication station. I got my old liquid cooled TIG welder here. This aluminum top, TIG welding only table. This is where the magic happens. So then we move over to our workbench and like junk storage. We built this whole bench out of steel and it houses all our tools and Harbor Freight toolboxes with strap-on badges, of course. And then this is just the bench, whatever project bike we got in here lives on this bench. I love all our other junk that just lives on horizontal surfaces. Here's our uh, machine shop. We got a lot of cool stuff over here. I don't really know how to use any of it, but it works pretty good for crushing beers. <laughs> I'm Tyler Marr with Martian Machine in Wichita, Kansas, and we build custom motorcycle parts for choppers, pull builds, um, custom fabrication, and I handle a lot of the sand casting. Amity Mar, uh, I handle everything behind the scenes for Martian Machine. So uh, anything that revolves scheduling events, uh, promotion and marketing. I'm Timmy Mar from Martian Machine. I do uh, all the welding and fabrication here at Martian Machine. Yeah. We are all Mars. First generation. We are all Martians. <laughs> so the name Martian Machine comes from our last name, Mar, M-A-R-R. -R, and it was just a childhood thing. Every one of us, I think, it, well, me and Timmy at school, we get teased, you know. Oh, you're from Mars. So then we just became Martians. So it was just kind of a natural progression into our name for our business. I'm super nerdy, so I'm really into science and maybe that kind of plays into it. Just being called a Martian forever, just being really into outer space, technology, science, engineering, kind of plays into a lot of our parts. And I think, you know, the ultimate goal of Martian Machine really is to be different than what's out there. And just having a name like that allows us the creativity to think outside of the box. I just like doing really goofy stuff that's never been done before. So I feel like being a Martian is the perfect thing. Like a spaceship. 
Iya. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got him, man. Right here. They came out of this backyard. It's still the same stick. There's normally a yeah, polishing compound. There's polishing, grinders, bandsaw, our blasting cabinet, uh, wire wheels. So anything that gets ground or dirty, we try to keep back here. And then this table moves in here sometimes. And this is just kind of the dirty, grindy, noisy, dirty spot. This is the, the chop shop. <laughs> this right here, this corner's in particular. This right here, this is where we get filthy. <laughs> filthy, nasty. So this is our most used tool in the shop. It's just a Milwaukee bandsaw with a little fixture that we made, but we got it set up on a foot pedal. So we cut all kinds of things on this thing. Um, you're not supposed to put your finger where you wouldn't put your dick, but we put our dicks into a lot of saws around here. <laughs> this is our uh, tubing bender where we make our handlebars. And got frames. all kinds of, uh, yeah, handlebars and frames and any tubing that needs bent, we do it here. We built this stand and bought a swag kit to convert it to air over hydraulics. So, works good. Martian Machine started as just kind of a thought in my head. Uh, my brother and I have been going to Sturges, riding motorcycles, building custom parts for a long time and just kind of doing our own thing here and there. I went on a big, long 1,000 mile trip in one day on my motorcycle and just listened to myself by myself for a long time and realized I didn't like the general building contractor business. Like wasn't fun, I wasn't having fun anymore. So. It's like, maybe I should do something different. Maybe Timmy and I can build something from this. So when I got to that event, he actually came up in his truck and we talked about it. He we threw my bike in his truck and drove home and we talked about it the whole way home. So that's kind of where the whole idea started. Then Amity and I went on a trip to California and I think for me, that's when everything changed and where I was like, okay, we have to make Martian Machine happen. And well, we didn't have Martian Machine yet. Yeah, we didn't even have Martian Machine we, yet. Again, we came it was up still with the name. like a thought. That trip got and, you on board. Yeah. And then once you were on board, you were texting Timmy. Yeah. And we were like, what are we going to call this thing? What yeah. are we going to do? And I think for me, what really changed the dynamic is the people we were hanging out with that weekend. We're talking about the things that Tyler had created on his motorcycle. And I kind of jokingly said, hey, would you guys even buy that? And they were like, why wouldn't we? And so that got me thinking, okay, this is something we can legitimately have happen. And just knowing how I felt while we were there and who we were able to connect with and just thinking like, we need to make this a part of our life and in a different way. And so we talked about it the entire way home. And then as Tyler said, we called Timmy shortly thereafter and we're like, hey, we need to get together. This is going to happen. Do you want to jump into this with us? And so he agreed. And then we started talking about a name. And then from there, it, we tried to get it off the ground and it just wasn't going anywhere. Tyler was working a lot. I was working a lot. Timmy was working. and. Um, really what we decided to do was to scale Tyler back from his job because he was the main man on the, on this. And so he went part-time for a while. We still weren't getting anywhere. And then finally, I just, not even knowing the pandemic was going to happen. I said, quit your job. Like you're not happy. If this is going to happen, then you need to do that. And so once he quit his job, Pandemic happened. Uh, he also had a loss. Uh, I in quit his my job. Yeah. And dove headfirst into Martian Machine. Uh, it was like March 
10th, 2020, like two days before the world ended. So then, yeah, we had a loss in the family. My grandfather died. And then we inherited a bunch of his equipment, which helped us progress our workflow, new machines, new lathes, uh, our mill and lathe and stuff are from him. Um, a lot of other smaller equipment. And then that gave us the ability to kind of set up this space uh, during the pandemic. So though we were making parts, we were pretty much building this space out in that time. And I mean, kept the lights on, kept moving, kept grinding, kept working on new stuff, coming up with new ideas. And then what really happened uh, to really take it to the next level was we had our parts and some other things ready to go, but it was just, again, finding the time to put everything in motion and get the website set up and so forth. And at EDR, the last time it was in 2021, Timmy and Tyler had brought a set of highway pegs and gave them to Chicken Rick, uh, chicken fried choppers, and he put them on his bike. And then it was later that year he had been utilizing them and he started posting about them. And people were asking, where can we get those? And so we literally spent an entire weekend. We we're like, we're dropping everything that we're doing and we're getting this website to where we need to be. And so we woke up like, got to the computer, wrote everything out, put pictures in, and uh, we were like, we have to make this happen. And so once we did that, it really just took off from there. All right, these are some of our whips we got in here. This is a 2008 Wildfire. It's a motorcycle from China. It's a four-door hatchback, three-wheeled, 650 water-cooled. So we might throw a Sportster motor in it one day. I got... My bagger, so foot clutch hand shift with pullback bars. The divorcer that I might get to one day. My wife's bike is in here. Need a couple more little tune-ups done on it. But those are the whips in here currently that belong to us. We got a, uh, a tire machine here. I don't really know how to use it, but it crushes beer cans pretty good. Now let's go outside and check out the iron horse trailer. <laughs> this is the Martian machine horse trailer. We uh, use this trailer to go to all our events and haul our booth around and all our motorcycles. It started out as a just junky old horse trailer we got from our grandpa's farm and we basically restored the whole thing and enclosed it. We took it all the way down to bare sheet metal, had the entire thing blasted, welded side panels in, beefed up the floor, um, obviously painted it. We still got some trim work and stuff to do, but it's working really good. Come check out the inside. So we fabbed up all the doors and everything are all basically built from scratch. The interior is rhino lined. Uh, it's got vinyl flooring with flush mounted E-Track so we can move our wheel chocks around however we need. Keep our vendor booth carpet roll and everything set up top, but works really good. Toes like a dream. It's narrower than the truck mirrors. It's perfect. Now we're gonna go take a look at my daily driver, the Marsh Machine Company vehicle. Have you ever seen a Chevy with the butterfly domes? <laughs> this is a, uh, a 2000 Chevy Malibu that I bought off a coworker for 500 bucks. It's, uh, it was rear-ended, so I cut the whole rear end off and turned it into a truck. And uh, I put about 10,000 miles on this rig and it is 
surprisingly off-road capable. <laughs> Done one Gambler 500 event here. So we pick up parts with it, do all our shop runs, load it up with steel and stuff like that. Take all the back roads and stuff on the way home. If we do get stuck, it's got a winch and tow points on the front. So we can winch ourselves out of any mess. Custom wood branch headlight adjusters there. Cold air intake, gotta have that. That's high performance. Motor mounts are all busted. They're all just welded solid with <laughs> junks of tube. And... <laughs> Works great though. We got the winter attachments are on right now. Yeah, CB radio, winter doors, keep the wind out of there. Spare tire, don't need that, but we got one. We uh, were off-roading down some road, found an old drainage ditch, had all this barbed wire in there, so we ended up making a bumper out of barbed wire. This uh, bully tailgate improves your miles per gallon. We get about 50 miles per gallon this hog. I think we're, we're honing in new processes on our parts that we currently make, but we're always looking for, like we have so many ideas that we honestly just don't have the time to do, but we have so many original, fully original ideas and I'm pretty like in the scene and I kind of know what's been done before. And so I kind of pride ourselves on doing things that have never been done before. And I would say, you know, as far as growth goes, we want it to be something that we can continue to develop new products without feeling like we're stuck continuously doing what, doing what we have now and sticking with the same things. Because um, we get asked about different ignition covers and things like that. Well, we don't want to be known just for that. We want to be known for other unique parts that we're creating. And so hopefully this year, we're going to be able to come out with a couple of new products that will be very attractive to individuals with choppers and uh, honestly people who don't want to chop their motorcycle but want to do things to it that are really cool so i would say just growing responsibly so that we can continue to do the things that we love um, we're riders first and manufacturers second you know we want to continue to enjoy the life that we have uh, built and not just get swallowed in the manufacturing and production of, you know, what our company is. And we pride ourselves on newer motorcycles, specifically 04 and up rubber mount sportsters is kind of our focus. Nobody likes a rubber mount because they're ugly. And then 07 and up, we got fuel injection. It's a lot of wiring, it's tricky. So we're trying to bring that generation of motorcycle, there's almost 18 years, model years of that platform that no one really makes any parts for. So that's kind of where we're stepping in and we're focusing on that generation because once all the rigid mount sportsters are used up, everybody's gonna be looking to buy a cheap rubber mount and we'll have all the parts for it. Now here comes the most important question. Uh, Penis pegs, are they the vein of your existence? The penis pegs are the vein of my existence. The penis pegs all started. We were in my garage at my house and we were like, we could cast anything, like literally any three dimensional object. And I have kind of this little makeshift bar in my garage. And I just so happened to have like a joke dildo behind my bar. And I was like, oh, we can cast this, you know? And Tyler was like, yes. Actually, that's a good idea. We can make like pegs out of them. Well, I compared it to the pegs we manufacture and I was like, it's almost the exact same size. Like this already is a peg. We just gotta make it one. And then we just went down a rabbit hole. We came over here, we cast it up some, then we ended up making a pattern board and yeah, then it just took off. We. Uh, in the machining process, we had to make our own tooling because you can't clamp that thing 
without crushing the veins or putting jaw marks on it. <laughs> so we actually sand cast our own set of negative female soft jaws that go in the mill so you can clamp the penis pegs in the mill without distorting it in any way and do all the manufacturing on the one end. Female soft jaws. Female soft Female jaws. Soft. It's a process. <laughs> and there's a lot of operations, a lot of steps. So for a joke part, it becomes... It became this whole giant thing. And that's, now we uh, just make dick pegs all the time. Yeah, that's the that's the story of Martian Machine and the story of our <laughs> lives, I think. We just do things because it's goofy and it's funny. Goofy and then people also think it's funny. So we're like, oh, maybe we could market it to them. Maybe we could sell this joke thing. And yeah, people are digging it. <laughs> and all myths have been debunked that it was, in fact, Timmy's penis. That was the mold. Yeah. <laughs> <Not> <laughs> I thought it was yours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's Amity's dick that we modeled. The original's actually in that drawer. <gasps> Got it. Oh, and there's the balls. And then here's the balls. So it was something you never see. <laughs> That's gonna be the clevis mount next. The balls. Yeah. balls. We'll do it like an Anderson <laughs> style and we'll have the balls on it and they'll flip up. But this was the whole thing, and then we cut those off, and then we split this, and we cast this part, and made a pattern board, and that's what we do. Just turn things into a metal, cast anything. So this is my work area over here. It's where I do all my sand casting. So we have a 1940s era-ish squeeze jolt, and it is a sand casting press and then a sand muller to rejuvenate and fluff up our sand. This head swings over and then you get a jolt so you have a box in here and then when you jolt it it'll actually jump the table and that packs the sand and then you can squeeze it and that will compress the sand. When you scrape it off and remove your pattern, and run in from there. Um, we've got patterns like this. They're pretty common, we make a lot of these. So this is kind of how they're made, two halves of a pattern in a box on there. And this is also pretty good at crushing beer cans. So this is our foundry. This is how we melt all of our aluminum. We made this out of an old air compressor tank. It's got a little foot lever. It's propane powered. And that we heat aluminum up to about 1200 degrees or so for brass or bronze. Then we pull that out, pour it into the molds here. So that's basically the big part of our operation is all the metal that we melt inside that thing. And then when we melt our aluminum down, depending on the type of aluminum we're running, we remove a lot of impurities. So that's how we end up with this dross tower. It just started getting taller and then we just started making it intentionally taller and taller. Just made like a art piece. Maybe it'll be a doorstop or something one day. I'm gonna put some parting compound on it. And then this is facing sand. So we do a fine sift to get like a real finely sifted sand, gets a better pattern. I'm just kind of set the pattern with my fingers, pack it down in there a little bit. Cut 
try to hold. Bow it off. These two halves close up, creates a negative void. We fill it up with aluminum. You got three dicks. I started sand casting in high school, it just as a vocational program in the metal program that we had in our high school. And it always just kind of stuck with me. Like I thought it was cool that we could take something and make a bunch of something out of metal. Like I really, really like that. And then I was just looking for something to do and figured out I could do it really cheap, really quick, and do it on my back patio. So I started making some stuff, just kind of poking around as a little hobby. Then Martian Machine became more serious. Um, we bought a 3D printer and I could 3D print patterns. So I could 3D print a thing and then turn it into aluminum on my back patio. But I didn't really know anything about pattern making. So I took a course with Crafty B up in Michigan and just basically sucked all the knowledge I could out of him in that weekend about pattern making. I knew how to cast, I knew how to do everything, but I didn't know anything about pattern making. So now all the knowledge I gained from him, I just do it digitally. So we 3D print our patterns with all the knowledge that I learned from an actual pattern maker and then sand cast it into our finished product. I think I, I started welding in middle school. Tyler built a tall bike, like a bicycle with three frames stacked on top of each other. And I thought that was the coolest thing ever. And he just had like a little like 110 welder in his garage. And so I was like, I need one of those too. And so we kind of together built a tall bike for me. And I think that was my first introduction to welding. And then I came home and my dad had like a little crappy Harbor Freight flux core welder. So I would just practice welding on that. And then by the time I got to high school, I had enrolled in all the welding classes and I had started getting into motorcycles at that point. And in high school, I was trying to figure out like, what, what am I gonna do with my life? You know, like, I, I guess I'm pretty good at welding. I guess I can just do this. And so I decided to continue my education and I uh, took classes at a local community college here and got an associate's degree in welding and it really taught me a lot. And then at that point I had bought, this is my first welder here, actually my liquid cooled TIG welder is my first welder that I ever bought off my neighbor. And uh, yeah, I just kind of self-taught. I mean, all my fabrication abilities are self-taught. Welding I learned in school, but yeah. I mean, a big part of getting us going was the business side of things and um, just ensuring everything is legitimate as possible. And really, I believe if you want to be taken seriously and appear to be a business, and I had really high expectations and big hopes for these guys. and. I knew that they could do it and they're manufacturers, they're <laughs> sandcasters and welders. We are not businessmen. So, <laughs> so um, I have almost 20 years of experience working with small and large organizations in my community and doing business consulting and different things like that uh, was something that I love doing. And so I was like, okay, we're going to take this on. and. Um, in that time, I have actually developed relationships with folks within our community that manufacture parts. And so that helped out with connecting the dots on being able to find someone to ma manufacture our highway pegs and also just developing relationships in our community surrounding motorcycles. And so through the connections I've made in my job, we've connected with other motorcycle companies in town 
and uh, other vendor relationships that are really important to getting done what we need to do. You can find us on the internet at marshallmachineco.com. You can email us at marshallmachineco at gmail.com and uh, find us on Instagram at martian underscore machine. And you can also find our parts at lowbrowcustoms.com. This whole company kind of started out of a motto that Tyler gave me from Lowbrow. He said, if you think you're going to do something, do it. So don't wait, don't hesitate, just do it. I'm definitely a work hard, but play harder type of person. Like I just enjoy life and I feel like our time here is short and you should be enjoying the things in life and not spending your life working it away. Yeah, don't ever think things, just do them. Don't be a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I often find I often find myself telling Tyler, "Shut up, nerd!" Yeah. And so like, don't overthink things. Let's just do it. Let's just get stuff done. Martian machine, you'll buy it. <laughs> we make parts like no earther. <laughs>